So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, my dear friends around the globe. It's uh, time to start our nice webinar. Today is November 27th, uh, 2021, and Iron International uh, are happy to host you in, during our international webinar. My name is Pavlet Waliashvili. I'm Iron Georgia coordinator, and I'm very happy uh, to be facilitator during today's webinar because we have very, very nice possibilities to have again in iron new meeting because since 1988 in iron teachers around the globe meet each other, share projects, share ideas, working together to have better future, better future of our earth. So new uh, educators who join us today to see how it's working, how iron unite people and how it's possible to say to each other, hello and welcome to our projects. So please take attention about short video about iron. Have you ever wanted to connect your students with the rest of the world? Since 1988, iEARN has been doing just that. Students are crossing international borders and jumping language barriers to collaborate on global projects across subjects like math, creative writing, art, science, and history. In a safe and secure online platform called the Collaboration Center, students and teachers participate in dialogue and hands-on collaboration with others from around the world. IEARN helps educators connect and communicate with other teachers and students around the world using interactive technologies, engage students and subjects through creative collaboration with their peers in other countries, and empower students to take action and make meaningful contributions to their local and global communities. Interested in learning with the world, not just about it? Join us at collaborate.iearn.org. So welcome, my friends. Uh, now I can see that in the chat box, you can see uh, teachers and educators from different countries. As you know, I am joint teachers, educators from 140 countries. So you can use chat box to say hello to each other, to find old friends, uh, shake hands, and to say, I'm very nice to see you here again. So because of iron uh, collaboration, uh, we, today we uh, meet each other and uh, we have possibility to share four projects uh, from different countries, uh, which is possible use in the, your class. So step by step, uh, I will announce participants of, uh, and uh, panelists of uh, today's webinar. And first one is Ekaterina Bozdogan. She is from Turkey, Ankara. Uh, currently working as project coordinator in Ani Private School, Ari, Ari Private School. Uh, she is English teacher and EFL teacher. Uh, she spent most of her time in the real time classroom, but today we have virtual possibility com to communication. And uh, Katie is a gold project facilitator in Iron Platform. I would like to say hello, Katerina. Hello. Katie. And uh, nice to see you here. And uh, it's very nice to, that we will spend time to hear about your project. So Thank I, you. will, I will switch on uh, uh, your presentation and please uh, uh, good luck to you and uh, I'm happy that you will share your project with others. Thank you, my kind regards. Well, thank you. First of all, my kind regards to everybody, the participants and the presenters. Uh, not to forget, happy Thanksgiving Day to everybody in US and happy Teachers Day for Turkish teachers if anybody is present and educators. Um, we would like to have a presentation about international collaborations in developing students' global competences within our gold project, which is a registered project on iEARN platform. Next. Globally competent students. These ideas are 
is so vital because it articulates the knowledge and skills the students they need to develop in the 21st century. The students all around the world, they want to investigate the world because they're curious, they're interested in learning, not only uh, about the world, but with the world, recognizing perspectives and being totally responsible what sharing their knowledge with other students around the world, communicating ideas and taking active actions. Next. Why global competence are so much important? As you can see in the screen, uh, the students and the teachers, they are learning together how to be productive and successful members of any society, whether it's the atmosphere in the classroom, because in the future, they uh, will be collaborating, communicating, they will be cultural and social responsible for um, their production in knowledge-based economy. And we want to raise global citizens are, who are responsible for their sustainable future, because we are instilling them this sense of global citizenship. Next. How can we develop global competences uh, in these situations of uh, very challenging times? Uh, sure enough, and we're very um, devoted that collaboration between classrooms, whether it's real-time collaboration or whether it's are probably some, some other kinds of ways, but global collaborations and projects, um, this is one of the approaches um, we really trust. Next. The gold collaborations, they aim to develop students' digital literacy in the first place, to recognize and explore students' own culture. They have to gain greater understanding and all, along with us of global cultural heritage to encourage to, uh, tolerance and celebrate diversity, and to use English and ICT skills as a tool of effective online communication. Next. I'd like to underline that international collaborations on any kind of platform these days, which develop global competences, they have to be active, innovative, diverse, inclusive, accessible, and sustainable. If we talk about um, alliance, with uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which are quality education and today, which is very important, good health and well-being of our students. Next. There are a lot of collaborations and ways how you can bat your priorities international and international curriculum. As an example, we're sharing great seven presentations that was a collaboration among Turkey, Finland and USA. Um, how much of the free time you have and that was um, interesting for our students because these days we have some time, but is it valuable and how effective we're using that? Next. Online communication could be achieved through digital platforms, which are asynchronous or real-time collaborations, whether your class, for example, here we're sharing podcast human rights, great seven presentations. They have been using asynchronous uh, file exchange, video presentation exchange, or whether your students are fond of sharing Padlets or Flipgrid or Google Docs, it's up to you. So you are and your students are the decision makers. Next, please. Digital literacy as a global competence and developing digital communication skills. These could be possible whether you are Skyping as we used to do or you're using Zoom effectively, but it works for even very small age students like grade one and grade two. Our grade two students, they were so actively engaged in creative padlets about wildlife, both in Virginia, let's say USA or in, in Turkey. The digital exhibition with grade one students, it was a uh, collaboration with our teacher, English and ICT department, that was three countries engaged, that was very colorful and we have shared that before with iEARN. Next. International days and celebrations, that's another way how you can embrace learning within your classroom because you want to uh, develop global citizenship and environmental sustainability. As I've just mentioned that very young students, like grade uh, three students, they enjoy doing um, incredible presentation and research about animals, animal stories, the posters, the act outs are on behalf of the animals and that is to celebrate environmental sustainability on the certain, for example, wild life day. Next. This is a very recent collaboration 
um, the, as an EFL teachers, we wanted to shed some light on Aesop's fables and um, to ensure effective and appropriate co communication online. That was a real time event, Global Reading Festival. Next. Um, if you have grade A students in different countries, they might be age 13 or 14, but uh, going for environmental sustainability and education as a sense of global connection helped us with the radio theater in the pandemic that was their springtime and we wanted to encourage environmental sustainability in the classroom. We uh, acted out the bluebird that was radio theater set a play and students they created them uh, the play themselves they were the decision makers next international artist day that was a kind of uh, very recent this october 25th uh, it took place between turkey and india we took some risk because for the first time we wanted to develop their artistic uh, skills online so how it worked we had one class on our side that was 24 students at once and 160 students success sections in India. So in real time collaboration for students, they did some research on the cultural heritage of both of the countries. And then they used their coding mathematics skills to color the patterns of traditional Turkish kilims. Like I, I'd explain that uh, one stood for green, two stood for yellow, and so it went. And eventually that took us something like a lesson time, 40 minutes um, in total. And then we shared the Artists for Nature Padlet with all the research and uh, all of the process presented. Next. Uh, the World Water Project, it's still in power. So we've just started it. Uh, it aims to develop a global citizenship in terms of environmental sustainability. And the questions we will be doing research on, why do we need water? Um, how can we get clean water in Turkey, USA, Spain, Italy, and Portugal? When do we waste water and how can we save water? In the next slide, we are going to watch a short video, which is a kind of summary of uh, the steps. Next. <laughs> Um, for the next part, um, we want to say that, yes, every collaboration needs some time. You have to be get ready, you know, prepared and get ready if you want to uh, develop any kind of global competence, but let it be environment, sustainability or sense of global connection. But if you are talking about partnerships for the goals, the most important step of any collaboration is getting the feedback from the students. And this collaboration, let's talk. Um, you can see probably and uh, read the feedback of their American students here. Uh, they found some sim similarities between Turkey and US. And the bitter similarity was that we both have COVID these days. Next. Uh, what collaborations mean to students? They want to visit different countries. They are writing that, yes, it's a great Zoom uh, meeting. We have different time zone. That's also awareness of who and where they are. They want to get closer and they want to visit the countries one day. Next. What it means for teachers. Um, yeah, we have been collaborating and, uh, with educators from uh, seven different countries. And throughout the journey, we have realized once again that we as educators, we're responsible for our students' lifelong learning because this is respecting our own cultures, language, as well as feeling lo loyal to cultural diversity. 
we need to have a broad vision of the skills that we're teaching because these skills will be used by our students are uh, in order to become global minded citizens. Digital readiness of the mindset, that is what takes time to evolve. And as we continue to collaborate, the more innovative ideas they were put into practice and it became easier for us to foresee mutual outcomes. It does not matter how well equipped uh, this or that educational institution is, but what matters most for teachers is the ability to apply background knowledge using technological tools for any kind of effective collaboration and communication when students are decision makers. As a teacher, we say, and we are very pr uh, proud and grateful to the IRN platform and the teachers and the students and their parents that they have been working with us effectively. And what connects us is um, the understanding that children's future, uh, it's in our hands and it's in our classroom. And it's just probably one second further from now. We want to celebrate success and thank you for listening. Yes, thank you for listening and to ensure that our classrooms and our students are safe and healthy. Thank you. Katya, thank you very much uh, for your uh, deep presentation about project which give us possibility to go in the different subject, different uh, issues to collaborate between schools. So now we have uh, two minutes or three minutes for uh, receiving questions. If we have some in the chat box. Um, we have right now only hello from different countries, but if somebody would like to ask something, please use. Um, so we have question, how do you choose which project to do with each grade level? Katya. Thank you. It much depends on the uh, student's decision because you can embed this collaboration or that collaboration into your national curriculum. Uh, how we follow this, uh, first the idea is um, to shed some light on their national and international values of uh, each country. If it does coincide with your priorities and your goals as an institution, as an education, as a school, yes. And then taking into consideration the interest and their, um, the capacities of your students and their age. So thank you, Katya. Next question, is this project mostly elementary level students or? can be for uh, we are working at the moment with uh, different schools and students uh, in these schools are aged 7 to 14 so that's elementary and their middle school okay great uh Kate, katia maybe we can use a chat box for continuing communication with you and please uh left in the chat box your contact details also maybe next questions will which will be connect with your project, you can answer directly in the mm -hmm. chat box. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time, for your support, and for your voluntary work as a coordinator of project. So now we have we need to go next. And the uh, next project is from Israel, Ruti Hotsen. Uh, she is a coordinator and facilitator of project Daffodil and Tulips. Ruti is uh, teaching for 60, uh, 36 years. And the project which she will uh, present already has 16 years history. I'm very happy that my students be in this project as well. And Ruti, please, it's your time. And I will switch on your project. Shalom, everybody. Hello, everybody. As uh, my friend says, said, I am from Israel. And I am going to uh, show you my project, Tulips and Daffodils project. It is uh, 16 years that we are celebrating with this project. So you will see that uh, there are plenty of uh, uh, pictures from uh, all over these uh, years and you will get the idea. Uh, it's you next, please. Yeah, please. Oh, okay. Uh, this is a project that is a PBL, uh, meaning project-based learning or problem-based learning. It means that every teacher in every subject can take it and even that it can be um, uh, done by a group of teachers 
in, uh, as you will see during the, the presentation. Next. First, we, talk, we begin with teachers. Uh, it's me in a class with teachers uh, doing this uh, um, preparation for this project by uh, teaching each other uh, what will be done during this project. I don't know if you can um, uh, pay attention to the participants, to the teachers, but they are from uh, East Jerusalem, means they are Arabs. And me, I am from Herzliya, from, I am a Jew, but we will uh, do collaborative uh, project together. Next. Okay. Uh, yes, please. Okay. First is, geography. Uh, as I said, it's a PBL project, so geography. Why, why, uh, how to, to, um, to connect geography to the subject that you are uh, uh, teaching, you will see. Continue, please. For example, uh, a teacher from Netherlands sent us uh, two pictures, one and please the second, yes. Uh, the first was the app, it's snow because uh, uh, teachers were asked or students were asked to um, plant uh, tulips or daffodils on the last week of November, means today, yes. And um, Netherlands did it and sent us the picture with the snow. Then three months after that, the same window, and you can see that the tulips, they took tulips, came up. Next. So we asked them, we, I said, all the participants asked them, how is it uh, with wild uh, uh, daffodils or tulips? So came from uh, Netherlands and came from Israel on the same time of the year, but in Israel, it's in the desert, it's in the south of Israel, and on the sea for the Netherlands. You can see daffodils in, in snow and daffodils in full uh, shining day. Uh, this is not only geography, this is also more uh, thing to do, but we will talk about it. Please continue. Another one. Um, daffodils in Israel on the left and daffodils in Taiwan on the right. In Taiwan, they put um, the bulbs in water, only in water. In Israel, we must irrigate. I don't know if you <laughs> can pay attention to the pumps that are between the, the tulips. Without irrigation, the, the, the tulips, yes. Without ir irrigation, they will not uh, go. And you can see it's uh, 12 hours different between Taiwan and Israel and 12 hours of difference in the climate. You will see, you can see. Next. We have another one from Ukraine, for example. Uh, they uh, decided uh, to, um, to take a question, what we call a, a, a question about the, the, wait, what we are going to find about this project. So they, they uh, measured how big are the bulbs of the tulips. And if there will be any difference, how the tulips will grow. They, uh, of course, they, as every class that participate were asked, they uh, say the temperature and the, all the other things. I want to say that in this uh, project, uh, you teach students elementary skills of uh, measurement. For example, there are standard. We will do it in uh, Celsius uh, degrees. There are uh, centimeters and so on. You will see. Continue, please. So Ukraine, now uh, a class in uh, the USA sent us uh, 
not only uh, the data, but also the, how they did it uh, step by step. You can read, you can see uh, how they uh, took the, the, uh, the place where they will do it. What I like very much in this picture that they said that this is a home for elderly and disability adults who cannot live by themselves. So it's a collaboration, not between classes, but between adults, uh, disabled uh, adults and uh, elder people. Continue, please. Okay, after they uh, did everything, they, they went to um, uh, spend a few days, you can see, uh, read for yourself, removing the weeds and preparing the garden for the bulbs. Uh, for uh, classes around the globe, it's interesting to see the pictures because of, not only because of, uh, ah, you're uh, nice in USA, they are doing the same, but also how students are there and what tools they are using and so on. Okay, continue, please. Oh. Uh, that was the first time for uh, other classes to see that you, that you can measure with uh, computer uh, sensors. And uh, after this year, everybody took the chance to do it. They are from uh, um, MA is, what is MA? I don't know. Somebody from the USA, please tell me what is MA so I will know. Massachusetts. Thank you. I don't know how to pronounce it. Even. Thank you for support. Yeah, good. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay, continue. Okay. Uh, when classes saw the pictures, they began to, to think about uh, more ways to, to measure, uh, uh, for example, the, how the uh, bulbs, uh, the height, the height, the height of the uh, bulbs, uh, how to record it, how to send the data to all of us. Uh, for example, in the down, you can see uh, a very small, um, uh, uh, tulip, very small, but from the picture, you cannot know how, how small or big it is. So uh, they were thinking about how, what to put so everybody can um, measure it with his eyes. So they put keys and they, that was uh, the scale for a um, younger student to, to realize how small or how big it is. Next. Okay, uh, some took uh, the, the question if the weight of the bulb, bulb will uh, influence the, uh, how it will grow. Some took the, um, how you say it, I don't know. Uh, okay, the, the one with the centimeter is doing it to, to know the- Measure. Yeah, thank you. The, yes, that's the word. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. They are there. Yes, thank you. So, and they saw that there are uh, differences in the rate of how it will go. Continue, please. So thank you for to, all to, my helpers. Oh, yeah, to, uh, this, Kathy this said to, to measure the diameter. How, yes, how we do thank it. you. <laughs> this this uh, uh, picture made for me the whole reason why to do this picture, to, to do this um, project. This, uh, project for 16 years. Um, can you please uh, uh, think, where are they from, those uh, girls? Okay, I will say the uh, answer. They are really from Iran, from Iran, okay? When my students saw this picture, because they send it on the platform, they say, okay, they are from Iran. We are not participating in, the, in this project because we are afraid, my students, yes? We are from Israel. So I said, okay, 
let's have a look very carefully on these uh, girls. What are they doing just now? They are laughing, yes? They Why? are not doing anything uh, to arm you. Okay, Ruti, we are doing it and we will see. A year after, they asked me, we want to do this project only with the uh, Iranian girls. Okay, continue. Uh, see the date where these uh, four, three girls planted their bulbs. It's on May 23. Why? Ah, because they are from Australia. So geography comes back. Uh, in Australia, they, no, no, no. Uh, oh, thank you. In Australia, they will do the project not last week of November, but last week of May because of the Aquentus. Okay, you can go on. Iraq, a student from Iraq uh, uh, told us not only about uh, uh, planting uh, tulips or, or daffodils, but more about their tradition and about the culture of the country. Continue. Another uh, idea of a teacher, uh, how to do PBL. I said that it is PBL. It's a, a teacher from uh, Taiwan and she wanted to send real um, uh, letters to all the participants of this year. This one is for me, to me, from Israel, to Israel. So they, they collect all the addresses. They put uh, stamps only with um, uh, vegetables or flowers on it and send to all the participants. Very nice idea. It's a language skills all. Nice. Okay, continue, please. When um, uh, classes are waiting for something to happen with the daffodils on the uh, um, tulips, a teacher from Japan said, why not doing some origami? So why not? You will teach us one and we will do it. You can see this, this one came from the teachers you saw on the first, um, uh, first uh, slide from East Jerusalem, from Israel. Okay, continue. Another idea from Taiwan, how to say daffodils in uh, some uh, languages, how to write it and how to pronounce it. Nice, <laughs> nice idea. Okay, continue. The, the teacher from uh, Australia is the one down and me, I am Ruti. And uh, if you want to ask me something. Ruti, thank you very much. I will just briefly, because of time, I will comment uh, from chat that uh, teachers said that it's so nice that they have not idea that so, so easy project can be international. So easy activities <laughs> and uh, international level and collect people from different countries to join the one, the one project. And um, there are questions what the, it's a lot of students in the US could plant bulbs to be a part of the project. Oh, nice. Okay, okay. Till uh, uh, we are talking about the north part of the globe, yes? So till the end of December, you can plant, but you have to decide outside or, uh, outdoor or, or in the class. Okay, and uh, uh, Ruti, last question. And after that, you can continue in the chat box if teacher okay. would like to. Uh, how can uh, you join? How teachers can join your project? Ah, very if easy. somebody would like, yeah. Yes, very easy. Go to, uh, to IR platform, look for the word daffodil or the word tulips and you will get it. Very so, easy. Thank you, Ruti, and the, your chat box, uh, you can see already links of project, uh, gold yes. project and the daffodil and tulips project. And uh, Ruti, thank you very much. And now you can continue in the chat box to communicate with teachers who would like to have more information about your project or to would like to join, okay? Thank you. Thank you very much. And now we will make a next step.
to GOMI project, GOMI on Earth. And Yoko uh, Takagi, uh, Yoko, are you here? Yes, I am here. Great, great. And uh, with Yoko, there are a team of Katie, Nami, Riona, Mizuna, and Mai. Yeah, is it right? And uh, you will uh, present together Gomi on Earth project. And I can say that I'm very happy to know Yoko because she was born in 1940. Uh, and I'm very happy that uh, Yoko is very active. She started Teleclass International in 1985 with Luma phone in Hawaii. And later in uh, 1996, uh, Yoko joined Iron, established Iron Japan Journey in 2000. And uh, Yoko uh, host 10th Iron Conference and Youth Summit in 2003. So Yoko, welcome. And now it's your time to share with us your project, GOMI on Earth. And uh, with you will be uh, your team members. So please Yoko, uh, it's your time. Thank you, Farvo, for introduction. I do not have any slides, so I just hope is that all right. Um, yes. Hello, everyone. About five years ago, as an ordinary housewife, I threw the garbage at the spot near my house on certain days, and the city truck then away. One day, carrying my garbage, I wondered where they would go. And what would be their ending? Then I called my city office and the incinerator to learn the process of those garbage. And my curiosity increased more. In Japanese, garbage or trash is go me. E -O -M where does Gomi go? How is Gomi's journey to the end? Then I faced Gomi troubles in the oceans or mountains on our earth. This is why I started Gomi on Earth as a young project. When I introduced this GOMI project at a young conference, we had powerful facilitator, Plassi. And recently, one more facilitator, my, Ms. Mai Okada. And then three of us working together. How to start GOMI project? First, you are GOMI objective. It is up to you, children and students, how to detect GOMI at, at GOMI part one. Please post what you find as a detectives on the GOMI folders to share with the other participants. Second, you learn Gomi realities at part two. Third, you are Gomi activist at part three. Your ideas, plans, actions will touch the Gomi solution someday, I hope. Please post your works on the folders as well with posters, videos, photos, etc. the way you like. I want you to be excited to go through GOMI part one to GOMI part three. Now, Asi will talk about GOMI, 
her teacher's perspective. And after that, Aoyama Gakuin University students introduce their GOMI project, Motainai Workshop. Now, Cassie. Okay, thank, thank you, you Yoko. Oh, now, Katie will continue. Katie Bosiak will thank continue you. about uh, GOMI project. Katie, welcome and please. Uh, it's your time. Thank you so very much, and welcome everybody. Um, this is this is for me an uh, an infectious project. It's it's something that once you get involved in it, you can't stop. Um, and I think that that's very very important to hear from a teacher standpoint because in so many so many instances now we're so worried about testing and we're so worried about you know, making sure that the students get everything that they need, but everything that they need is wrapped up in this project. And I think that that's very interesting for them. Um, I think that the, the main reasons that I got involved, and so I wanna pass those along to you because Yoko explained very, very nicely the process. Um, we all create GOMI. Um, and for the most part, it's forever on earth. It doesn't go away. And so it's important for us as educators to realize that we're part of the problem so that we can educate our students to become solutions to the problem. So if I could have the next slide, um, I want to point out I that am Gomi. there I are garbage or trash in English, no matter oh. what language you speak. I am still Gomi. I am still trash. This project is about the long journey of Gomi on Earth and what we can do about it. So that's, that's how I approach my students with it. Um, I tell them, I don't even tell them what the what GOMI means. I ask them to tell me what it means. And I'm very, very involved with using the sustainability to go, goals. Um, the two that we focus on pretty heavily are 11 and 14, because they talk about what's going to happen sustainability, you know, sustain, a, it's early in the morning, sorry, how we can be sustainable. Um, it's a project that's had a lot of a lot of countries involved and it and that sort of ebbs and flows depending on on circumstances and depending on whether or not and particularly now we're remote or we're we are um, face to face. But I, I think, again, what I want to get across to you guys and this if I could have the last slide, please, is that this is a project based learning. Project as well, and you can take it and do what you want with it. Um, you get to collaborate with teachers and students. The students get to meet other students. They get to learn about them. They get to learn about the different cultures. Um, and it's and it's 100% student driven. So what I've got pictures of there are a project that two of my students came up with a number of years ago. And it, and it literally was two students that came up with the idea. And they thought they wondered what happened, not only to the trash that we produce paper wise, but, you know, and, and generate just kind of in in general during a living of a day but what happens to some of the bigger pieces and what happens to clothing and what happens to some of the things that people don't talk about so they wanted to get that across to the community and they literally took and collected pieces of trash had a designer and a model and so you can see the models <laughs> were the were the boys in the class and the designers were the girls and they designed clothing from the trash and it was all focused around a particular theme and then they put on a, what they called a trash and show so instead of a fashion show it was a trash and show and they brought members from the community in so that they could see um you know the types of things that could be done with materials that oftentimes were thrown away and so they focused it on their own their own likes and their own um interests the top one the the students were interested in whether and so this was 100% weather directed. Um, the corset that the young man is wearing is actually part of a laundry basket that was thrown away. And so he turned it into a corset. Um, the gentleman on the bottom came from a farm. And so that is the logo for a tractor company in the United States called John Deere. And so everything that he had on there had was green and yellow and, and had to do with that particular, you know, that particular um, company. The community is still talking about it. Um, and I think that's the important piece that comes along with any sort of project where you're trying to teach the students and their community is the sustainability of how long somebody talks about it as well. 
Um, if it's something that, you know, is, is great when the activity is going on, that's wonderful. But if they're talking about it, these are students from 2011 and they're still talking about it 10 years later. So that's kind of what I'd like to get across to people that are interested in joining something. This is a long-term project that the students do over the course of the semester. And so they, they become deeply involved in it and it seriously becomes part of who they are. So I, I can't wait to meet y'all. And I, I hope you get as passionate about it as I am. Betty, thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, now it's time to continue uh, presenting, presenting of Komi project through next part of project. And uh, please, we will continue with a group of young people here. Yeah? They uh, have next part of presentation. So Nami, Riona, Mizu, uh, Mizusa, and Mai. I'll begin. Um, so hello, we are the facilitators for the Gomi on Earth program, and we are from Aoyama Gakuin University in Japan. Okay, next slide, please. So we would like to basically talk about two things that we have done. Uh, so one is about the video. And we have created a video about plastic waste. And the second is about the workshop. And we'll talk about uh, today's program. Next slide, please. Yes, so firstly, I will talk about the video about plastic waste. Next slide, please. So we basically divide it into two parts. And one is about the severeness of plastic waste problem. So we basically have given some statistics and some pictures in order to let the children know about like the current, um, um, current situation. Uh, next slide, please. And the second part is about the life with less plastic. So what this means is that um, we have um, showed some life hacks or some solutions that we are doing um, as a facilitators to, um, in the regular life. And yeah, we kind of gave some hint um, to solve the problem of plastic waste to the children. Next slide, please. On day one, before doing the actual workshop, we did self-introduction workshop with the participant students and got to know each other. Next slide, please. On day two, first of all, we had them learn about GOMI project, uh, GOMI problem through a quiz. Um, for example, of the questions are like mass disposal of plastic waste and microplastics. Um, next slide, please. We ask each student to access to the food like um, quiz site from their smartphone and answer. Or if that is difficult, ask them to answer by chat. The students had a lot of fun um, learning about the problems of gummy. Next slide, please. Okay, in day two, we make newspaper box, which is the main part in this workshop. Before beginning day two, we have sent a video and a manual for our partners to give some information about how to make newspaper box. And in day two, we did a lecture. In the lecture part, we taught how to make newspaper box in real time. The way to make it is very similar to origami, which is one of the Japanese culture. So it was fresh for our partners. Next, please. After all, all of us finished to make boxes and have a lot of smile. Next, please. So thank you for your attention. We scheduled to have next workshop as student facilitator. And um, it will be held with three different countries members. And then in this workshop, the participants can think about environment issues, GOMI problem, activity, and know what other culture members think about it. If you are interested in this workshop, 
please contact us or be GOMI member and make it together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for inviting. So we have like half minute if somebody have question about project. And I already saw that there are some discussion inside of uh, chat box. Uh, so you can continue. Uh, thank you, Gomi. Very meaningful project. Uh, thank you for wonderful presentation. So there are comments and uh, there are one discussion about fundings who uh, fund projects. And maybe you will say, do you need some funding to deliver this project or you do everything without any money or any support? How was it? It's um, for us there. Everything was, you know, still. In fact, I just posted in the in the box right now. My students are building a giant plastic ball from bags from grocery stores or that kind of thing. And they are tying them together into big, long strings and we're rolling them up into a huge ball. Right now, the ball is big enough so that if I sit behind it, you can't see me. So there's no there's no outside cost. Um, there was no outside cost for the trash and show. You know, it's it's literally looking at the amount of of gomi that you produce first individually, then as a family, and then as a you know school or community. So, unfortunately, everything that we need is right there waiting for us. Thank you, thank you, Katie, uh, for uh, answering. And I think continuing uh, discussion in the chat is good possibility to keep contact between teachers and coordinators and facilitators from different projects and different countries, especially when teachers are first time in the iron connection. So they need to receive as much as possible. Thank you for your uh, contribution, all team and good luck to GOMI projects. So now we have next project. Next project is TOPA project for Tokyo 2020 and Beijing 2022. And Mayumi, uh, Sayuri and uh, Si Hong will uh, represent this project. Dear friends, please switch on your cameras. Um, and Mayumi is in iron since 2017. She is master in the TESOL from Teachers College, Columbia University. And uh, Sayuri is a uh, graduate Temple University College of Education in 2016. Uh, she joined IRON 2017 and very active uh, since this time. Uh, we have Si Hong. Uh, she is China co co Country Coordinator of IRON. So welcome and please uh, start introduction your project. Okay. So hi everyone. I'm Mayumi Takizawa from Tokyo, Japan. Uh, co-facilitator of the Olympics and Paralympics in Action, TOPA project, with Sayuri Hasegawa and Su Hun, Fan, country coordinator of China. We'd like to introduce the TOPA project here. Next, please. TOPA project aims to foster friendship, spirit of encouragement and unity in diversity through learning about the Olympic and the Paralympic Games, especially their values warmly welcoming and involving host nations with visiting athlete nations. Next. For Tokyo 2020, from 2019 to 2020, 32 schools from 16 countries and regions worked on this project, but Tokyo 2020 was postponed to 2021 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, still, we believe that it was time to encourage each other more than ever to overcome the challenging time. So 16 educators and students from 10 countries and regions got together at Topa Global Exhibition 2020 on Zoom in June. In June. Thank you. Next. Okay, even during the pandemic from 2022 to 2021, 17 schools from 13 countries and regions worked on this project and 50 educators and students from 11 countries and regions joined TGE 2021, Tokyo 2020 plus one in June, a month before the opening ceremony. Next. 
Uh, here is an overview of TGE 2021 program to show what TGE 2022 might be like if you uh, join TOPA project. First, participants introduced themselves saying hello in the, each language. We used the nine languages at that time. Next. Uh, Mayumi, make it, we can use chat box to say hello in here too, yeah? In our chat uh, box, we can say hello to each other. Like, uh, you know, and to see how many different hello we will have. <laughs> And please, everyone, say hello in chat box in your language. Uh, I'll say, please type your hello <laughs> in your language in chat box. Thank you very much. Konnichiwa in Japanese. <laughs> OK, so OK. And uh, next, OK, then we ran the Olympic and the Paralympic values together. This was the most important educational activity at TGE 2021. Next. The participants were divided into five breakout rooms for exchange and interaction, like this. Next. And we discussed our favorite barriers and reasons, then shared them all together. Moreover, we watched a collective video of the project outcomes from both primary schools and secondary schools posted in TOPA recent news forum. Next. In the youth session part, students presented their responses to COVID-19 and favorite Olympic and Paralympic sports and athletes. Next, please. Eight school participated from six countries and each giving a seven minute presentation. Here are the participant school names and countries. Next please. We also introduce each country's way of cheering for athletes in each language and created a top version video of let's cheer for the world. We said, see you again, hoping to see Tokyo 2020 take place safely. Now I will pass the button to Sayuri. Next slide, please. Over to you, Sayuri. Thank you, Mayumi. And hello, everyone. I'm Sayuri. Hello, I Sayuri. Show... Hello, Pavle. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, well. Great, so I will show the development of TOPA at Tokyo 2020, hoping to trigger ideas for the iron teachers who are here today and to meet their local needs. So Tokyo 2020 was held with almost no spectators because of COVID-19, but the two TOPA facilitators went to the games as official Paralympic volunteers. Next slide, please. In official uniform and mask, Mayumi was in the press operation team at Budokan, a judo venue. I was at the Tokyo Aquatic Center for Swimming, assisting working visitors who handed medals to the Paralympic medalists. Next, please. In addition to banning spectators, COVID-19 countermeasures were taken in various ways to protect the health and well-being of athletes and all those managing the games. And in all this, a top of project outcome found its way to the Paralympic Games. Next, please. Chitose Elementary School sixth graders wrote topa cheering messages to athletes. These were put together as a vid video with the children singing a Tokyo 2020 song in English. Next, please. Two official Olympic and Paralympic staff watched the children's video and then kindly recorded a message in reply to thank the children for their encouragement messages. On the right are the surprised children watching that, that reply video. Next, please. Children then wrote back thank you messages to the two official staff. This intercultural exchange was authentic and empathetic, further deepening the children's project experience. Next, please. 
This is a peace collage developed by Magoma Elementary School children connecting Paralympic values with Paralympians. And through volunteering, Mayumi related most to the value of inspiration from stories and accomplishments of Paralympic athletes. And it was determination for me. Paralympic athletes showed us what we can do with what we have. And with that, I will now pass the baton to Sihan. To you, Sihan, next, please. Ayuri, thank you, and Sihon, please. Hello. Hi. Thank you. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm Sihon. It has been 69 days ahead of Beijing 2022. The excitement atmosphere and the rigorous management as well. Yes, we still encounter the COVID-19 globally. We should be more solidary that is why the slogan is together for a shared future. Next, next, please. In China, pandemic prevention and control have become normalized. Despite those areas that had the cases, most others live a secure daily life. To strengthen bodies to enjoy life is people's common willingness. Here are some photos. The left photo is people were exercising Kung Fu. The right photo is a man was playing the opera and people were dancing in the public square. Next, please. How about the top project in schools? Next, next, please. The smiling faces of the students' paintings express joy and peace. Next, please. Schools held sports meetings. Students from southern China learned about winter sports. They handmade these crafts with bamboo, like figure skating, ice hockey. Next, please. Northern students made ice flowers and snowmen, sending their wishes and enjoying. And now with this, I pass the baton to Mayumi. Okay, so. Uh, the last part. And this is what to do in the new IAN Collaboration Center from December to January 15th. Okay. Uh, first, uh, register for TOPA, okay, in a school visit. And second, post to introduce students' favorite winter sports and or athletes participating in Beijing 2022. They will be included in a collective video for TGE 2022. Secondary schools can choose to participate in TGE 2022 to give an online presentation. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, Topa Grover exhibition TGE 2022 will be held on January 27th and 20, sorry, 20, uh, 20, 2022 on Zoom, but only for TOPA project participants. So uh, one, educators at all school levels, educators with secondary school students to give an online presentation. TGE 2022 registration will begin in December soon. So we look forward to collaborating with you all, hoping to see Beijing 2022 take place safely and peacefully. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayumi, Sayuri, Shihong. Uh, thank you very much for joint project. And uh, it's very nice, like Olympic games, it's rotating and it's like cycle. So you invite a new generation of participants for next part of project. And uh, it will be possible to have, uh, uh, like we have comments. Thank you very much to Topa, the slogan, be happy with that you have, it's amazing. And it's nice uh, that to, to do a lot of things only with limited resources, but iron give us possibility to have friends around the globe and uh, have a lot of resources to do school projects, school activities. Uh, thank you very much. And now it's time, I think, uh, to summarize today's meeting, today's uh, webinar. 
And we had four projects and uh, we had project international collaborations in the developing students global competencies. It was first project. Second project was daffodils and tulips. Uh, third project was Gomi on Earth. And the last one today, then the fourth project was Topa project for Tokyo and Beijing. And uh, I hope uh, all participants and all listeners receive new tools for do activities at school. So we will continue in iron uh, to do uh, different uh, webinars. And next December webinar will share inspiring and lessons learned on event planning and management for the host of previous iron international conferences. You know, uh, iron do international conferences try to have a possibility to join teachers and students and all hosts who already did previously iron international conferences gain some kind of experience uh, and the uh, iron leaders who uh, would like to receive this experience who would like to hear what was in the previous life uh, you are invited next uh, webinar which will be in december and uh, please use iron platform to be part of iron community uh, join iron.org slash join and uh, you will be uh, part of huge amazing society of educators and students thank you very much and uh, now it's time to say goodbye and please please use chat again to say uh, thank you to all presenters in your language to write just thank you in your language and say which language is it yeah which country merci in french in the japan thank you very much Goodbye and thank you for all. Thank you very much. And thank you Iron uh, International to give us opportunity to be together together. Thank you.